Hello, my name is Brian Casey, Editor-in-Chief of AntMini.com, and we're here at the 2018 edition of the RSNA meeting in Chicago. We have with us today Dr. Paul Chang. He's with the University of Chicago. He is an expert on imaging informatics and artificial intelligence issues, and we talk every year about uh, those topics and uh, really enjoy the conversations. Thanks for, thanks for being with us this year. Well, thanks for inviting me again. It's, yeah. it's a, always a pleasure. Yeah. So uh, what are some of the things that you're seeing in artificial intelligence, both here at McCormick Place and also in radiology in general? So remember last year, we talked about the Gartner hype curve, you know, that uh, there's always this kind of peak of excitement where we get very excited, but in reality, our eyes get a little bit bigger than our stomachs can consume. Mm -hmm. And that in radiology, we tend inevitably to overpromise in the beginning by very early in the hype, because at the end of the day, we radiologists, we're geeks at heart. We like new technology, and, and so we tend to buy very early into the hype. But then it takes us quite a bit longer than anyone anticipates to actually consume it appropriately. And, and this is not unique to radiology. The Gartner talks about the hype curve. We get into this peak of enthusiasm, and then we kind of go into what we call the trench of disillusionment. I would say this year we're kind of kind of at that peak. Have you ever ridden a roller coaster? Oh, of course. Okay. Yeah. So you know you kind of go. You're all excited about the roller coaster. You're going click click click. You're going up, and it's like this is going to be great. This is going to be great. And there's that moment over the peak when reality sets in. Like, what the hell did I get myself into? You know, now reality sinks in. Like, what am I doing here? This is really scary, and this is about to become real. And I think that's kind of my perception when I talk. When I listen to the scientific sessions, I look at the technical exhibits, we're kind of that roller coaster where we're suddenly realizing, oh my gosh, this is about to get real. Now, this is not exactly the trench of disillusionment, right? Where we overpromise and everyone says, you lied to us. No, 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 we're still kind of at the height, but we're beginning, especially the folks, the vendors that are tasked to provide these solutions to us, they're beginning to understand this is about to get real. How are we going to make this real? You know, people have mentioned before, oh, look, we've made great progress. We've got FDA approval for certain algorithms. That's true. FDA approval doesn't mean there's a solution to operationalize to make it real. All right? So what are we experiencing now? We're kind of experiencing what I describe as kind of the anxieties of re a uh, 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 real ma making something real and the anxieties that are associated to making something real. Um, we are also and quite predictably the other phenomenon we see when we go through this cycle is in addition to these realistic anxieties about making it real now that we've kind of assuaged the fear and now everyone's excited and now unfortunately impatient, right? Um, there is also f first mover challenges, all right? And we'll talk about that in a, in a bit. The first thing is, you know, I think the good news is when we're kind of anticipating the, 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 the dip, I think we've done a good job getting beyond kind of the irrational fears of AI. Now I think, I think organized radiology, I think folks like the RSNA and refresher courses have done a good job educating, and I think industry has done a reasonably good job educating radiologists, understanding they're not going to replace us, it's going to augment us. I, I think we've done a very good job. We could do a better job though, because unfortunately, and I think you guys have, have, have written about this, you're seeing more and more papers, one, in, one from Canada, another from the US, and Europe and another from Europe describing the fact that we've done less a good job educating our future physicians future radiologists these papers I'm referring to reflect the results of surveys that of medical students in these various uh, areas of the world where medical students the best we used to attract the best and brightest in radiology for a lot of reasons um, now medical students are being dissuaded from going into our field and one of the reasons for it is this uncertainty about artificial intelligence. Will it replace me? Will it reduce the need for radiologists? So although I think we've done a pretty good job educating radiologists of today, I think we could do a better job educating the radiologists of the future and all that. So that's one aspect there. Uh, there's also a lot of good news about FDA approval. We talked about that. Uh, but now the, the challenges of first mover and, and the, the realistic anxieties come to play. And I would say they're in two broad categories. The first is when it comes to making that real and operational, the analogy I like to use is, is uh, that of a car. You know, you could have the best, fanciest race car in the world, 
But without gas and roads, it's worthless. It's a hunk of metal. And within the context of artificial intelligence and machine learning, the gas is data, all right? Because as we discussed last time, Deep learning is really the brute force dumb cousin to machine learning. You know, remember machine learning, we've had machine learning for decades. You know, CAD, breast CAD, that's traditional artificial intelligence, traditional machine learning. The reason why it didn't raise such a big hubbub is because machine learning had humans at the front that had a clever hypothesis or feature model, an a priori feature model. And then they developed the statistical tools to differentiate between normals and abnormals. The difference with deep learning is it's actually a brute force dumb cousin to machine learning. There is no preconceived model, either because I'm too lazy, too dumb, the problem is too hard, but what I replace it with is lots and lots of annotated metadata. That begs the question, where do we get the annotated metadata? And that's a problem right now. In fact, that's the challenge, that's the gas. This, this AI is a fantastic race car that has a lot of promise to help us, and Lord knows we need help. Because right now, one of the common themes we're hearing is burnout and people barely hanging on. I, in my practice, I feel days that I am barely hanging on, that I'm not doing the maximal value to my patients. And when I hear papers about uh, more precise precision radiology, I, I feel guilty because I can't do it because I don't have the time. I have barely time to measure lesions, let alone doing this advanced visualization and advanced phenotypic characterization. So we need the help. The problem is that with the guess, these uh, deep learning requires all this vetted data, and we don't have it. Our IT says, I just finished giving a refresher course that described the challenges of this EMR-centric architecture that we have that m requires humans to be the integrating agent. In order to have annotated data sets, we need interoperability amongst these systems, and that's a problem. Now, we're making headway, things like HL7 Fire, that's improving the ability to what we call ETL, or extract information, but it's not sufficient. We need better architectures to be able to achieve this at scale. You're seeing promising work in so-called weak annotation methods, where maybe we could use, for instance, natural language processing. Processing. By the way, you know, to me, one of the big benefits, I think the future benefits of uh, machine learning will not just be in the convolutional neural network. In other words, we tend now in radiology to be very image-centric. You know, a lot of the use cases deal with images. And that's understandable. We're yeah, image-oriented yeah. you know, folks. But I actually think one of the big benefits of AI is going to be the ability and the application of deep learning to extract structure and meaning from all these unstructured narrative reports in our EMR. And one potential case is to feed the beast of convolutional neural networks. If we can use a way of extracting reports and path reports and combine with images, perhaps we can come up with a scalable mechanism by which we can achieve weak annotation. Weak annotation is not as good as the time-consuming uh, annotation that vendors are doing now, uh, but it has the advantage of having large numbers. And when you have large numbers, yeah. you have the advantage. Kurt Langlotz talks about this a lot. He yeah. has a very promising initiative at Stanford doing yeah. exactly yeah. that. And a number of groups and vendors are doing similar things. Because the problem with the gas problem, getting vetted data, is a huge challenge. And one of the fears, and this is a classic example of first mover. As you know, Christensen writes this book about innovators' dilemma. And in every new transformative kind of thing, like AI, the first movers, tend not to succeed for a lot of reasons. And one classic first mover challenge is how do you get the data? Because we cannot get the algorithms. Right now the algorithms are still relatively pedestrian because they're driven by data availability, yep. not by actual use case. Well, they're trying to address this by using classic first mover strategies. I'm going to hire a lot of radiologists. I'm going to come up with a lot of folks to do this annotation. Well, you know what? That's a great boot fat, bootstrapping first mover method. It's not maintainable. It's not sustainable. You know, how are you going to monetize that? You're, you're burning money and resources to hire. We're very expensive folks. So we're going to have to find a way of incorporating annotation in our daily workflow or workflow. Yeah. It, uh, things like weak annotation, using NLP, to, uh, uh, AI enabled NLP to extract meaning from other systems along with advanced interoperability will help. Okay. So that's the gas. Mm. Now we're talking about the roads and this is a bigger problem. Yeah. A car not only needs gas, it needs roads or it's still a hunk of metal. AI needs roads and the roads in AI is workflow orchestration. Right now, I, the examples I see from the vendor community 
at how they're going, how I'm going to consume AI into my workflow is wanting. It is still primitive. It's still recapitulating the CAD model. You know, I'm going to put screen, you know, secondary captures. I'm going to, I'm going to require me to look at some other tool. Well, that's going to slow me down. The whole advantage of using this advanced IT, whether it be big data or AI, is to improve my efficiency, improve the quality of what I do to reduce variability. Uh, how am I going to do that if the AI improves efficiency on one end but increases my inefficiency because I have to mess around using all these extra tools? We have an impedance mismatch between what the PAX vendors, our traditional IT stack offers and what these new AI thinks. So again, still early times and that's a huge issue and an early mover challenge. We'll get there, but that's one of the reasons why it's going to take a lot longer. So that's the first class. We, have, we still have a gas problem mm -hmm. and we, we still don't know how to drill for gas and find it at scale, and we don't have the roads, you know, yeah, optimal yeah. workflow. But there's another problem, okay? And it's a, ha it's a predictable, understandable problem, and it's actually in the long run a good sign that we're actually moving and this is eventually going to be real. It's going to take longer than anyone anticipates, but this problem is a fundamental one because the vast majority of us are not going to do research in AI. Even though it's pretty simple, everyone, everyone and their brother thinks that they can do it. But like I said, I think two years ago, the other analogy, this is like the gold rush. Yep. Everyone and their brother went to dig for gold. Most of those people literally died, yeah. okay? Well, so I think part of the problem, and that's a first mover issue, right? Yeah. I think the second major issue now is now that we have FDA approval of the algorithms, right? A lot of these algorithms interest radiologists greatly. In fact, one of the disadvantages of a place like this, and I'm a huge fan of RSNA, as you know, okay? I think it does great things, but one of the things that is less optimal is that RSNA, as well as other meetings like this, serve as wonderful self-resonance echo chambers. Mm. In other words, you get, you get a data scientist who has expertise in deep learning talking to a radiologist and suddenly we self-resonate and decide that this use case which interests the radiologist is the most fantastic use case in the world and we're going to take over the world with that. Here's the problem. We radiologists are no longer decision makers, right? Yep. So just because something is a great thing that I want as a radiologist, might be a nice to have to the C-suite. We have to understand that the youth, for this industry to move and to be real, in addition to the gas and road problems, we have a fundamental issue understanding and prioritizing what application, what use cases are must-haves and not nice-to-haves. And I'm going to make a terrible statement because I'm a radiologist and I'm a problem radiologist. We're not the people that make that decision. I'm sorry, because we're not the decision makers, right? We tend to emphasize on things that improve our lot and our patients' lot. The C-suite basically is motivated by three things. TCO, ROI, and regulatory requirement, right? Total cost of ownership, which is efficiency, productivity, uh, and, and, and return on investment, which is rare, but is applicable here as well. So that's going to be the huge challenge, and that is how are the vendors in AI, most of them are startups, most of them are going through initial capitalization and, and they're burning, you know, because they're hiring all these people to vet, right? Yeah, because yeah, you yeah. need the gas, you need the data. How are you going to monetize this? How are you going to actually make this a sustainable business when the use cases you've articulated, the use cases that you're working with the radiologists are nice to haves and not must haves? That's a challenge, okay? This is a happy problem. This is the, oh my gosh, this ride is about to be real, yeah, all right? Yeah, that yeah. means, real means, how am I going to make it work in the real world? How am I going to operationalize it? How am I going to sustain data, you know, vetting? How am I going to make it real and integrate it? And how am I going to make a living so that I can trust the vendor that they're going to be around next year when I have to use it? This is challenging, but this is not surprising. This is predictable. This is healthy. We go through this. Now, unfortunately, there are going to be a lot of casualties in this roller coaster ride. A lot of the people in that roller coaster ride, while they're screaming, are going to be thrown off it, okay? That's the first mover issue. The vast majority of people, just like the people digging for gold in the gold rush, are going to not succeed. They're not going to be around. But there'll be the nuggets, the people who select the must case, the must haves rather than the nice haves. What are the must haves now? Efficiency. Efficiency is key, right? So, the application of these technologies to improve acquisition. All right? Reduce the busy work that I have to do to allow me at scale to provide precision radiology, 
very specific phenotypic characterization, radiomics. That's the thing that's going to be the must have, not the stuff that gets the press all excited about replacing the radiologist. So even though this sounds scary, this is a predictable healthy sign that we're moving along. It's also an explanation why I still believe it's going to take a lot longer than most of us anticipate, but we'll get there to add value to our patients. Very good. Well, we'll look forward to seeing that uh, new reality. Very good. All right. Well, thanks again uh, for being with us. It's always a pleasure. Thanks. Right. Signing off for AntMini.com, my name is Brian Casey.